We're now going to have a look at the retouching tools in Photoshop CS4. The first thing we're going to work on is the brushes because they're just amazing. Let me just grab the background image here and then we're going to grab the brush here. Now typically when you're working in Photoshop, if you wanted to change the size of the brush, let's grab a color here. For example, let's grab a white brush here. And if you wanted to change the size, you would either go to the menus or you'd use the left and right bracket keys. Well, what we can do now is so much easier. It's a little bit harder for Mac users, but a lot easier for Windows users. It's just because the keyboard shortcut's a little harder. But if we grab the control key, not the command, but the control key and the option key on the Mac, and then drag left and right, we can resize that brush. See how easy that is? On Windows users, just use Alt and then right drag. And then if we want to do the softness, we hit Control, Option, and in command and notice as we drag we can see the edges of that brush so we can change the softness of it so now I can begin to paint with that brush and if it's too big let's just make it smaller and now we can paint with a small brush on windows to change the softness it's alt shift and then right drag let's just undo that though because we don't want to destroy our image let's have a look at some of the other options one of the things you'll see here is a new adjustments panel. Well, they've made this so much easier to use. In the past, we'd go down and we would grab an adjustment. And then when we grab that adjustment, what would happen is that a dialog box would open. Well, while the dialog box is open, you can't adjust opacity or retouch something or do anything else until you finish working and then close the dialog box. Well, now with the adjustments panel, all we simply do is click this little left arrow and this shows a list of adjustments. And out of these adjustments, you just roll over and you can see at the top here, it shows you what they are. Well, there's a new one here, which is very welcome. It's a vibrance. And if I click, now we have a vibrance adjustment. Of course, it's not going to work on this image because it's a grayscale image. Well, not really grayscale, but a split tone. I mean, we could look at it a little bit and you can see how the vibrance changes a little bit. It's hard to tell, but it's not like the saturation. A saturation slider will just go across the board and saturate everything. Whereas the vibrance will look at areas that are less saturated and saturate those more than areas that are already saturated. When I say saturated, it means how much of that color is in there. Because when an image is already um, saturated in an area, the last thing we want to do is overdo it and then clip it. So once we've added an adjustment, we can just go back here and we can add other adjustments. For example, let's grab our curves. And notice when we do that, now our curves appear right in here and we can start to make those adjustments. We can change that contrast there right within the image. Another little thing in curves, by the way, is this little tool here. If we click and we can drag on any point and we drag that down to darken it, or up to lighten it. Notice that we can change those specific points there. Let's lighten up the front of the car. If we want to just brighten it up there around the light, we can do that. And notice that it sees those specific areas of tone and it changes them. So that's pretty neat. Let's go back again. And you'll notice that all the different curves here, once we've made all these different settings with the different uh, tools here, we can save them. We've got a lot more presets here now. Notice that these presets are already there, and, and they'll show when we click on them. Or we can save our own presets. It's very nice. And the adjustments are added here, just like they always were, right here in the Layers palette. Notice something is happening now. We see this little thing is going on. What it's doing is it's clipping these to the top layer. This is the option here. If we turn that off, now it will just create them like normal. If we click it in, it will clip them. And when I say clip, notice what it does is it makes a clipping group so only this layer is affected by those adjustments rather than all the layers underneath because sometimes that can be a real pain. Let's see what else we've got here. Another thing we have we've got is this masks panel. Right now we don't have a mask, but say we wanted to duplicate this layer here. And then let's change the color of it. Let me go back to the adjustments. I'm going to grab the hue saturation. And if you don't know which one it is, just roll over until you see it. And that's a hue saturation. Now we're going to click that. I'm going to choose Colorize. And I don't know, let's make this warmer color here. So now we've added that hue saturation adjustment layer. 
there it is there what we want to do now is we're going to grab the mask panel and we can work on that mask now if we wanted we could have just clicked that mask button there and that would create a new mask for example if we go down here and we want to create a mask on that layer we just click and it adds a mask now if we want to work on the mask we work on it just like before if we work with black we can paint away that mask and let's make our brush bigger using the same keyboard shortcut that we knew and let's make it a little harder because I like a hard edged brush when I'm working on a mask and we're just going to paint back in the color of the car so the car is going to be this cool color while the background is warm and there we go we just quickly did that quick little retouch there and now if we want to change this there's some things we can do for example we can change the feather if I drag the feather up what it does is it creates a soft edge around there versus the hard edge. Let me just change this hue saturation a little bit more so we can see what's happening a bit more. We're going to turn the saturation all the way up. Just make it really bright and we're going to make that red. Okay so there we go. You can see the harsh edge there. Let's go back to the mask and we're just going to click here to select our mask and now if we do the feather what it does it will soften those edges. Watch this see how it softens those edges there it's just the equivalent of blurring a mask but the great thing about it is it's non-destructive so we can change it later on another thing we can do is we can now have a thing called mask density which is just like an opacity slider for the mask as I turn this down I will lower the effect of that whole adjustment notice that so I can slowly blend it in and just apply it say at 78 percent and now we're not masking out the whole thing notice it shows as a gray so that's a really great thing. Other things we've got here is we've got the um, mask edge, which is just the refine edge that we've used before. If we turn it on, you'll just see that. Since it says it's a refine mask, but it works just like the refine edge that we've seen in the past, and we can play around with that and get our mask right in. The other one is a color range. We can use a color range here to make selections, or the other one is to invert. If we hit invert, it'll invert that mask. Notice that instead of just the car being selected now everything but the car is being selected and we can invert it back at any time so you can see those are really nice huge refinements here let's have a look at another couple of refinements I'm just going to mention quickly we're not really going to get into those but with our retouching our dodging and burning tools those have been in, uh, increased a lot now instead of having this horrible effect it's a lot more natural it affects the tone without hurting the color anymore. And the sponge tool, we now have the option of having vibrance in here with the sponge tool. Of course, we'd have to select a layer that was able to support it. And then we can see the vibrance button comes on there. And now we can use that sponge to work with vibrance rather than saturation. So that gives you a little bit of a feel of some of those new retouching features and some of the new adjustments and panels inside of Photoshop CS4.